this time on Anime the Recap. High school student with difficulty maintaining a secret from anyone, Asahi Kuroman, develops a crush on his cold and reserved classmate, Yuko Shiragami. His classmates push him to try again despite his concerns that he could be rejected in a similar way as when he confessed his love to class president Nagiso Aizawa. When he gets to the classroom to tell Yuko, he discovers her spreading out a sizable set of wings from her back. Yuko acknowledges to Asahi that she is a vampire, but that she could only attend class if she pretended to be someone else. Asahi promises to be her buddy and guard her secret. Head of the newspaper club Mekin Akimi intends to find out how Asahi's confession turned out in the meantime, and Najisa seems to be watching Asahi from a distance. Asahi reveals to his buddies that Yuko will be his sole companion for the time being. Asahi was severely rejected by Najisa the summer before to keep him from getting too close to her, but now she is jealous of him since she sees him with Yuko. Yuko later finds some cream puffs that Najisa left on his desk and eats lunch with Asahi in an otherwise empty classroom, but the cream puff is too spicy for her to eat. She unintentionally flashes her wings as Najisa enters the room, but Najisa also unintentionally flashes her tiny alien form when she emerges from her human-sized external unit and fires a tiny ray gun at Yuko. Yuko stops Asahi from being struck by Najisa's memory erasure apparatus, which he uses to pursue Asahi while fearing that her own secret will be revealed. In the end, the three agree to keep their personal information private, and Maiken is shown removing a listening device from an unfinished cream puff. Asahi is interrogated by Maiken for further details regarding his encounter with Yiko in class but he refuses to give her any out of concern that she will disseminate the information around the school like she once did. Later, Asadi's teacher asks him to bring Yeko's homework, since she is ill and unable to attend class. Maiken makes the decision to pursue him, but Najisa seems to be able to divert her attention. Asahi decides to drop by Yeko's student apartment for a quick visit, but she receives a call from Najisa informing her that Maiken managed to elude her and flee to Yeko's home. After being accidentally knocked out by Yeko's clutter from the closet, Mika decides to Photoshop a passionate exchange between Asahi and Yeko and threatens to display it in front of the entire school. On the rooftop, Asahi confronts Mika and begs her not to do it. Her pleading only makes her more determined, so Asahi chooses the other course of action and allows her to hang the photos, which saps her willpower because she didn't want him to be happy. After school, a spirit inhabiting Mika's glasses believes that she is secretly in love with Asahi, but Maiken vehemently refutes this while twirling her own pair of glasses. Najisa begs Asahi for assistance, because her external unit's battery ran out before it could recharge, forcing her to approach him in her Lilliputian form. With Yeko's assistance, Asahi sneaks into the girl's restroom and brings Najisa's body down to the nurse's office. Asahi tries to pass Najisa off as a lifelike figure, but Maiken discovers the tiny form of the actual Najisa as they are leaving. Asadi is forced to snatch Najisa back and hide from his buddies, because this just thrills Maiken and Shimada, who arrives later, while Najisa struggles to maintain a doll-like poise. After hiding out in a gym storage building, Najisa grows inexplicably to human size and feels ashamed to show Asahi her antenna as Maiken, Shimada, and Yiko pursue them. Asahi makes the decision to have the human-sized Najisa punch him out of the shed while making his getaway while acting furious. Najisa is magically transformed back to her natural size by a mystifying horned woman, and Asahi and Yiko later settle their disagreement. Najisa intends to teach Yeko how to avoid sunlight on her way to and from school after learning that UV radiation from the sun caused Yeko's skin to immediately tan. Asahi researches the weaknesses of vampires and Najisa urges Yiko to put her new skills to the test in the real world. They pass through a shopping center on their way there, where Asadi tries to keep Yiko safe from vendors selling crosses and garlic. Crosses merely irritate her. Garlic makes her eyes water, but their effects on Yiko are considerably less destructive than how they are portrayed in popular culture. When Asadi inquires about sunscreen use, Yiko is prepared to abandon her new daylight route after coming over an exposed bridge. It is ultimately used by Yeko for the first time the next day at school. Asahi and Yeko visit an amusement park together the following weekend. It was an opportunity for Yeko to get closer to Najisa, but Najisa turned it down because he wanted to set him up with Asahi instead. The two of them visit the attractions, including a haunted house where Yeko initially reacts negatively to the actor playing a bloodthirsty vampire before getting agitated. Later that night, 
Yenko reflects on how similar their outing was to the bond she and her parents shared, to the point that they even went to the same school. In the meantime, Yeko's father is wary of his daughter's new boyfriend and gives the werewolf Shiro Shishido the responsibility of bringing Yeko back home in case her secret has been discovered. Asahi and Yeko come across a terrifying wolfman with teeth on their way home from the theme park. Yeko recognizes him as Shiro, a friend from childhood, yet he still threatens Asahi. When Shiro notices the moon in the night sky, he eventually turns into Shio, a seductive woman. Shio says that she is the dominant personality in the body she shares with Shiro when the three of them go to Yeko's house. When Yeko learns that Shio is making fun of Asahi, she becomes envious. Shio then discloses that the wolfman can transform at any image of the moon, including one that Yeko had shown her. Shio is holding Asahi down when Najis arrives to Yeko's house to deliver a cake she baked herself as a peace offering. Najis then departs. She leaves when she comes back a moment later and discovers Shiro standing in the same spot. The girls eventually resolve the issue, and in a private exchange, Shu advises Yitko to be more forthright about her connection with Nanjiza. The following day, Shio shows up as a transfer student in Nanjiza's class and introduces herself as a pervert. After receiving constant bullying at school from Shio's body, Asahi starts to projectile nosebleed, and Nanjiza starts to grow envious. When the two spy a young girl with horns walking by them, Asahi flees to find Yeko. Soon after, Yeko makes the decision to talk to the girl, who identifies herself as a Kane Komodo and claims to be related to their homeroom teacher, Akari Komodo. Asahi and Yeko then discover that Akane is actually a 1,000-year-old devil with real horns and Akari's great-great-grandmother when Akari appears to drag Akane back to her office. Akane asserts that she was responsible for allowing the numerous supernatural personalities to enroll in the same class. Despite Akane's attempts to come off as a grown-up, Yiko keeps using snacks to get infantile reactions from her while asserting that she is the more mature female. Asahi is coerced into serving as the judge by his nosebleed reactions, while the two girls then decide to hold a sexy contest in the empty school gym with Shio serving as the host. Najiza begins pursuing enigmatic demonic energies from her cat-like spaceship somewhere in the city in the meantime. Yiko and Akane compete against one another numerous times to demonstrate their sexiness, but Asahi consistently receives the most intense response to Shio's activities. There were sexy posture competitions, swimwear competitions, dancing competitions, and cosplay competitions. Finally, Yiko dares Akane to persevere while consuming the terrible cream puffs that Miken had created. Yiko and Akane blow up the gym in a significant explosion to terminate the competition, sending Najis's spaceship flying from the shockwave. Asahi learns that since he skipped the first culinary class, he must take it again. He is thrilled to learn that Yeko, Nejiza, and Shio will be cooking curry with him, but quickly learns that all three of the girls struggle with it. Akane follows Nejiza's instructions and unintentionally throws a chocolate cake out a window, where Akane uses her horn to grab it. She takes a bite and immediately falls in love with it. Akane escapes until a curry emerges to drag her back to the home economics classroom. Mikan decides to buy refreshments for Akane in the hopes of interviewing her. The two women are horrified to learn that Yiko and Najisa overdid it and accidentally added something to the curry that makes it emit deadly gas. Later that evening, Akane attacks Akuri's apartment, destroying a wall, and demands that she summon Najisa to prepare more chocolate for her. When Akuri declines, Akane replies by magically guiding an asteroid in the direction of Earth, endangering the planet. When Akuri notices that the asteroid deviates from its course, when Akane loses focus, she binds her to a chair and forces, feeds her chocolates prepared by everyone but Najisa. Yiko, Shio, and Najisa rejoin to make chocolate in the same room. Akane tries to replicate herself to get to Najisa's chocolate, but the other girls are able to beat them off until Akane loses concentration enough for Najisa's spaceship allies to cause the asteroid to turn around, sparing Earth from disaster. Asahi summons the courage to invite Yoko to the pool now that summer has arrived. The issue is that Yoko doesn't know how to swim and believes Asahi is asking, so they can both practice. To Asahi's dismay, Yoko invites Najisa and Shio to go along with them, and the three friends of Asahi also go. With Najisa serving as her assistant, Shio instructs the class in swimming, but her lewd directives throw Shimada into serious difficulty. Najisa knocks her out with her subsequent lectures, taking over as instructor naturally in a militaristic fashion, 
but her instruction style nearly drowns both Yoko and Asati. Then Maiken appears with her two young brothers and without her camera for once, and exhibits sympathy for Asahi for the first time. Asahi and Yoko split up from the group after the pool shuts, and everyone has left for home, meeting later that night at the school. It turns out that Yoko wants to continue her swimming lessons at the school pool. After some more practice, Yoko talks to Asahi about how her parents learned to swim and how her life has improved since she met him. However, when they start using their first names to greet one another, under a cane's covered observation, things get awkward. Asahi and Yoko are invited to join them at a buffet restaurant by Okada, Sakurada, and Shimada, but Yoko declines out of concern that she could spill her secret. However, Asahi persuades her, and things appear to be going well until Maken, a waitress who works at the restaurant, shows up with her most recent batch of Russian cream puffs for Yoko to try. Despite the constant threat of Yoko being exposed, such as the bats hovering outside or the appearance of her wings, things are still in danger. Shimada, who is unaware of the deadly consequences of Maiken's pastry, joins Asahi in trying to eat them all in order to protect Yoko, with the predictable outcome. The following day at school, Maiken is inconsolable, because she misplaced her heathen queen spectacles, Asahi, Yoko, and Najisa help her look for them. When it comes out that Akane stole them, a major pursuit across the school ensues, culminating with Akane using her magic to make copies of herself wearing the same glasses. However, Akari ends the chase, returns the glasses, and hauls a cane off to be punished. Najisa discovers the truth about the glasses later by the river, that they are inhabited by a Fukunokami, a god of good luck, in this case, a god in training, and that the Fukunokami chose to live in the glasses because they were filled with positive memories of Maiken's childhood and her true feelings for Asadi. Maiken constantly tries to throw the glasses away rather than confront her genuine emotions, but Nanjisa stops her and challenges her to face Asahi without them. The glasses warn Maiken that Asahi and Yoko will join them soon if she doesn't confess her feelings to him. The Fukunokami blurts out, Asahi-kun, the fact is I am in love with you. In a panic and in the subsequent commotion, Nanjisa ends up wearing the glasses just when it appears to everyone's horror that Nanjisa had spoken. Yuko, Shimada, Oka, and Sakura, respectively, invited Asahi and Nanjisa to the summer festival but she fooled them into enjoying an amazing time alone together. Asadi and Nejisa are followed by Yuko and Shio as they observe their interactions. In an effort to ease the awkwardness, Asahi encourages Nejisa to participate in the shooting game. While seeing the two of them play, Yuko gets agitated and forgets where they went. Maiken then appears shortly after with her two little brothers and aids the two of them in their search for Asahi and Nejisa. Nejisa trips and falls onto Asadi shortly after they discover the two of them, at which point she realizes how much she loves him. Yuko had avoided the Saudi since the incident at the summer festival, not knowing how she truly felt about it. Yuko often gets in the way of Asadi's attempts to work with her on projects. Shio discusses with Yuko the importance of being more open about her own emotions. Asahi also seeks counsel from Sakura, Shimada, and Oka on how to approach Yuko once more. In the hallway, Najisa considers her own emotions, and decides that she needs to apologize to them in person. As she ascends the stairs, Akane declares that she has heard Nejisa's inner voice, which states that she would prefer to remove Yuko from the situation in order to be with Asahi instead. Nejisa disputes the assertion, but Akane insists, and Akuri eventually shows up and brings Nejisa back into the principal's office. Akane left behind a picture she had shot at the summer festival. Nejisa examines the picture on the stairway and decides to retain it for her own use solely. She tries to hide the picture from Asahi and his pals when they discover her a short while later as they descend the stairway. Maiken shows up as well. She ascends the stairs and wonders what the noise is all about. When Maiken notices Najis is standing back up, she is suspicious and tries to capture the image the other is hiding. Najis up unintentionally drops the photo as she pushes the two of them against the wall, and it coincidentally lands in Asahi's hands. In a fit of rage, Najisa rams ice cream into Asadi's eyes and returns the photo. Everyone saw Najisa devour the photo in front of them to destroy the proof. Asadi, who is blind, leans his arms up against the wall to prevent Najisa from entering. When passerby Yuko notices this, he takes off running. She starts to reflect on everything that has transpired over the last few days, including what Shio stated while she is at home in the bathtub. At home, Asadi has a nightmare that he and Yuko are no longer friends. Asahi locates Yuko the following morning, 
and she tells her to meet her that evening on the rooftop. On the rooftop, Asahi decides he was going to confess to her. Najiza heard their chat and is unsure about what she should do. Asahi's previous love confessions are all explained by Maiken, who was also seen watching, and how his relationship with Yuko was his sole true love. Asahi was moving towards the rooftop when Najisa realized what she needed to do and stopped him. Asahi, who was always being pursued, fled for his life as Najisa attempted to put him to sleep using a sleep-inducing device. Asahi reached his breaking point and scaled a stack of desks and chairs to reach the roof. He arrived to find Yuko being dragged away by a mysterious bat who turned out to be her father. The pursuit of Yuko by Asahi, Akari, Najisa, Shio, and Akane is impeded by Akari's hesitation to go over the speed limit and risk ruining her new automobile. When Akane uses her skills to seize control of the car after knocking out Akari, the vehicle is destroyed. Yuko's father, Ginger, confronts Asahi, Nijiza, and Shio when they break into the mansion. When Asahi urges him to give Yuko back, he is questioned about their relationship. The group tries to help Yuko escape when she arrives, but discovers that her father is taking her home since her mother is ill. She had asked Asahi to come to the rooftop, so that she could inform him that she was going home for a while. After learning that Asahi is aware of Yuko's secret, Ginger pursues them, but Asahi manages to make him trip over a banana peel. Yuko and Asahi discuss what happened at the school festival while hiding in Yuko's room. Ginger tries to eject Asahi from Yuko's room, but Yuko's mother Tio shows up and startles him, causing him to flee. As Yuko and Asahi approach Ginger to speak with him, Najisa reveals herself to them as an outsider. In exchange for Ginger's vow to permit Yuko to continue her studies, Asahi offers to have his memory of Yuko's secret erased. In exchange for Asahi erasing all of Ginger's memories of Yuko, Ginger agrees. However, Najisa is unable to complete the act, and Yuko assaults Asahi before he can do so on his own. Ginger collapses just as she is ready to express her affections for him, and Najisa understands that Ginger must have been hit by the hammer when Yuko tackled Asahi. Najisa and Yuko Converse over on a jury as they discuss how much they enjoy hanging out with their fellow students. Akari and Akane pick up the students the following morning. Akari made Akane pay for a new car in full. Ginger chases after the car and waves goodbye while acting as if he doesn't care that Yuko is leaving. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to Enemy the Recap.